This is a gathering of friends and family celebrating the life of Jared Bridegan, who was murdered just the month before. On the evening of February 16, 2022, Jared Bridegan was driving south on Sanctuary Boulevard, a narrow, dimly lit residential roadway in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. The 33-year-old Microsoft executive had just dropped off his 10-year-old twin children, Abby and Liam, of whom he shared custody with his ex-wife, Shanna Gardner. In the car with him was his two-year-old daughter, Bexley, who he had with his current wife, Kirsten Bridegan. As Jared was driving down the residential road, he spotted a tire blocking his path. Not being able to move around it, he put the car in park, turned on his hazard lights, and exited the vehicle to move the tire. But the tire was planted. Seconds later, he'd be dead. Two people in this celebration of life photo are suspected of being involved. One is looking at a possible death sentence. This is the story of Jared Bridegan. Our story today takes us to Jacksonville, Florida, the largest city in the state with a population of nearly a million people nestled in the northeastern part of the Sunshine State. Its location on the St. Johns River and the Atlantic Ocean means it has the leading port in the country for automobile imports and is a leading transportation and distribution hub in the state. Its strong economy is also anchored in the fact that it has a balance of various sectors including financial services, biomedical technology, consumer goods, information services, manufacturing, insurance, etc. It also contains the headquarters of four Fortune 500 companies. It is also home, believe it or not, to the Jacksonville Jaguars NFL team. Unfortunately, it's also called the murder capital of the state, specifically gun murder. Despite this, in 2021, the city saw its homicide total drop 30%. The quiet oceanside town of Jacksonville Beach, however, had only one homicide all year in 2022, and it's the talk of the country. It is this one. Jared Bridegan was born on June 29, 1988 to Gaylord and Joanne Bridegan in Warrensburg, Missouri. When he was growing up, the family moved to Jacksonville, where Jared would graduate from the Douglas Anderson School of the Arts in 2007. His educational pursuits took him to Utah Valley University in Orem, Utah, where he graduated in 2014 with a Bachelor of Science degree in digital media with an emphasis in cinema production. He had an interest in videography, but he was also an accomplished user experience designer. That talent led him to take on various career roles, including senior UX designer at Canopy, director of UX at web.com, chief technology officer at Clean Simple Eats, and up until his untimely passing, senior design manager at Microsoft. Jared was widely known as a loving family man with a strong attachment to his Christian faith who felt his sole purpose in life was to provide for and raise his family. And that included four children, Liam, Abigail, Bexley, and London. At the home in St. Augustine, Florida, indications were his children loved him. He had built a playhouse in the backyard, created a laser tag arena in the garage, and had spent countless hours playing with his children. He also doted on his wife, Kirsten. Together, they worked on home improvement projects, including adding wood beams for the master ceiling and building a custom fireplace and office desk. He'd also helped the neighborhood out with such projects and often lent his tools to his neighbors. It's just a little glimpse into the person that he was. Jared was a Mormon and he was a Sunday school teacher at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Children at the school would often say that Jared brought fun to the classroom, including by injecting humorous stories in lessons. Born in 1987 to Sterling and Shelley Gardner, Jared's now ex-wife, Shanna Gardner, hails from an affluent Utah family, which ran a paper craft company called Stampin' Up. 
The company was founded by Shelley and generates an estimated annual revenue of more than $100 million. In 2010, Shanna and Jared married and had two children. Those would be Abby and Liam. As a Christmas gift in late 2014, Jared bought Shanna a package of personal training sessions. That turned out to be both a saving grace in the short term and Jared's death knell in the long term. That's because the next year, Jared reportedly discovered some flirtatious emails between Shanna and her personal trainer. To this day, Shanna has denied any affair while she was married to Jared, but her personal trainer said the relationship turned romantic. In fact, the trainer said Shanna told him that her and Jared had been separated for months as they were getting romantic. Shanna filed for divorce in February 2015, despite friends saying Jared was willing to forgive her for the sake of the kids. I mean, obviously, if you think about it, you want to keep the family unit together for the kids. The kids generally, you know, emotional attachments and stuff like that, it would, it would kind of screw them up. But Shanna didn't seem to care because they reportedly butted heads over how to raise the children. Jared reportedly complained about Shanna's move away from their religion. The trainer said she didn't want any more of the Mormon living. It was also reported that a staffer at the Twins Private Elementary School said Shanna spoke about her divorce when they met for the first time and she disparaged him. The staffer said, quote, there was this disdain, unquote. The two parted ways without much connecting them except for their two twins, of which they shared joint custody, and the long contentious court battles over custody and finances that led all the way up to his death. A day after filing for divorce, Shanna admitted to asking a tattoo parlor employee in 2015 if he knew of anyone who would shut up her husband. She said this was just bitter divorce talk. Court documents described the divorce as, quote, highly acrimonious, unquote. Three years would go by. Custody battles and visitation continued. Then one day in 2018, at her CrossFit gym in Jacksonville, and presumably while doing some wacky looking pull-ups, she met a maintenance worker named Mario Fernandez Saldana. The two married shortly after, with Shanna adopting his last name attached via hyphen to her own family name. It is reported Jared, who dropped off the kids at Shanna's place, did not get along with Mario. This was one uncomfortable triangle. Mario was a piece of work himself. He was reported to police for animal abuse after having killed a cat with a BB gun. From a completely objective standpoint, that's straight psychopathy. But now, Jared had married Kirsten in 2017 after the two met on a dating app. The couple had two-year-old Bexley in 2020. Still, the legal battles continued over the twins, the only thread connecting Jared to Shanna. Little did he know, the seeds of a ruthless and cold-hearted plan were being planted. On the evening of February 16, 2022, Jared strapped in two-year-old Bexley into her child seat as the twins Abby and Liam hopped in the car. Tonight was Jared and Kirsten's date night, a regularly scheduled day in which the two would have dinner and do a quick activity while Jared had custody of the twins. And so, as per usual, Jared was to drive from St. Augustine to Jacksonville Beach to drop the kids off at Shanna's place. Shanna knew her time with the kids was this day Wednesday. So did her husband, Mario. And a third person, Henry Tenen. But Henry wasn't at the Shanna house this evening. He was positioned off the narrow sanctuary boulevard in a dark neighborhood. He knew the route Jared would take leaving Shanna's house, and he bet that a tire he rolled out in the middle of the road would get Jared out of the car. 
7.30 p.m. At Shanna's place, Jared didn't say much as he kissed the twins goodbye, unbeknownst to him for the last time. As he approached his car, he looked at Bexley, who was strapped in her car seat. Jared had pulled out of the driveway and made his way to Sanctuary Boulevard, some miles from Shanna's house. He called his wife Kirsten, who later told investigators there was nothing unusual in the conversation. That was moments before Jared came upon a tire obstructing the middle of the road at about 7.49 p.m. Wanting to make sure he would get Bexley safely home, he put the car in park, put on his hazard lights, and stepped out of the car. As he was about to reach for the tire, a man appeared and from close range fired multiple shots, execution style. Many shots were fired. A frustrating number of shots were fired. They clearly wanted to make sure Jared was dead. But what somehow even worse, the bullets carelessly shattered the windows of the vehicle narrowly missing Bexley as she sat crying in the vehicle. A resident driving by that night spotted the car and alerted authorities. Jared was dead on the spot, his body riddled with bullets. The hunt for the owner of the Ford F-150 tire was on. People have an ambiguous relationship with security cameras. On the one hand, they generally like their privacy. They prefer not to be watched by strangers. But on the other hand, surveillance cameras on streets serve a vital function in solving crimes. This case is no different. Investigators believe the crime was to happen along this stretch of road in particular because they knew there would be no surveillance cameras to capture the crime. However, several surveillance camera on Shedder Avenue captured a blue 2004 Ford F-150 Lariat exiting the murder area and stopping at a traffic light on the night of February 16. Another camera captured it driving away. The footage is dark, so it's hard to pick up the license plate. Police urged the public to come forward if they had seen the truck with news releases promising cash rewards of up to $55,000 for information. One of the first things the police noticed was that nothing of value was torn from Jared or his car. No watch, wedding ring, phone, money, or wallet. So robbery as a motive was out of the question. This was something else, something malicious. Quote, this was a planned and targeted ambush and murder, said Jean Paul Smith, the chief of Jacksonville Beach's police department, during one press conference. Six months after the murder, after it appeared investigators had more questions than answers for the murder, a routine traffic stop occurred in the hot August summer. A Jacksonville police officer caught 61-year-old Henry Tenen, a pallet builder, driving on a suspended license. When he searched Tenen's car, he found a shotgun and a small baggie of marijuana in the car. He was initially charged with possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and misdemeanor possession of the marijuana, but those charges would be dropped. However, he did plead guilty to felony driving with a suspended license. So he was held in jail. But who is Henry, and what does he have to do with his case? Tenen has a long rap sheet, dating back to at least the mid-1990s. He has a history of domestic battery, hit-and-run crash, habitual offender charges, burglary, and a number of felony driving violations in 2000 that have resulted in at least a year of prison time. He also spent a year in prison in 2008. As he awaited a January sentencing on the felony driving charge, investigators were able to connect some dots. Suspicious of Jared's ex-wife, investigators dug in and discovered a single link between Tenen and Jared. Mario Fernandez. That's because Tenen was a tenant in a home on Potomac Avenue in Jacksonville, Florida. A home owned by Mario. Now this home was eventually sold three months later in October 2022, 
by both Mario and Shana. And this occurred after Tenen's arrest, so just so you know the timeline. So essentially, Tenen also helped around with some of Mario's property. So it's more than just that he was a tenant. He was also helping, you know, he was a handyman and he was helping around with Mario. So they knew each other on a both personal and kind of a business level. Digging deeper, investigators requested Tenen's financial records from PNC Bank on October 14, 2022. They discovered three handwritten checks signed by Mario and made out to Tenen. Investigators also retrieved phone records showing Tenen and Mario had 35 phone contacts in the month of the murder, 30 phone contacts in March, and 5 to 9 phone contacts in May and June. So either Tenen was a terrible tenant, or he was a hitman for hire. Investigators believe it was the latter. From the records available, investigators said the suspects began planning the murder six weeks prior to following through on it. In January 2023, Tenen was arrested for the murder of Jared. In late January, we announced the arrest of Henry Tenen on several charges, including conspiracy to commit murder, and second degree murder. He was charged with second degree murder, which could carry a life sentence, conspiracy to commit murder, which could carry 30 years, accessory to a murder, which could carry another 30 years, and child abuse for the danger he put Bexley in, which could yield him five years. I want to read you the comments that Tenen's daughter sent me. It reads in quote, I am in shock. I never thought my father would do something like this. I truly believe he's being set up. My heart is broken and I am praying for him. I'm so sorry this happened to Mr. Brightigan and his family. They will be in my prayers too. This is all I have to say. In downtown Jacksonville, I'm Tristan Hardy. First Coast News, on your side. Tenen has since pleaded guilty to secondary murder. He awaits sentencing. Meanwhile, investigators swooped in to bring Mario for questioning after being taken into custody at his home in Orlando on March 16. He has been held at the Orange County Jail since then and is charged with first-degree murder. Earlier this month, Florida prosecutors announced their intent to seek the death penalty against Mario, who has pled not guilty. Quote, The totality of evidence establishes that Fernandez Saldana was a principal to Bridegan's murder and that Fernandez Saldana solicited, conspired with, and assisted others involved in Bridegan's murder, and that the circumstances of the murder reasonably could have been expected to cause physical or mental injury to Bexley while she was in Bridegan's vehicle, according to an arrest affidavit. Since the murder, Shana has relocated with the twins to an upscale six-bedroom, four-bathroom house in the Tri-Cities area of southeastern Washington. That's some 2,800 miles from Jacksonville Beach. The modern ranch home was purchased in September for $1 million by a corporation with an address tied to her parents. Following Mario's arrest, Shana announced she no longer associates with him. She has since remarried, because of course she did, and runs a baking business. But her cutting ties with the conspirator does not let her off the hook. I will preface this by saying that all suspects are presumed innocent until proven guilty by a court of law. Investigators said after arresting Mario that all involved will be brought to justice. The obvious next target is Shanna. But investigators are also keeping a tight lip on updates as they don't want to tip their hand. In fact, Kirsten was even told not to publicize who she thinks is also involved. So the questions remain. Was Shana involved? Is it possible that while living with Mario, she didn't hear about or did not know about the plot after it was committed? One interesting aspect of the case is Shana's public comments in that rare interview with a Florida newspaper. I was asked to not talk to the media or give a public statement, but with the level of speculation, I felt that now it was necessary to to speak out. Shanna Gardner revealed she was asked by Jared Brightigan's widow, Kirsten, not to speak publicly, but we wanted to know how the relationship could have gotten to that point. I'm sure there, you would say that we've had happy moments 
I mean, Tabloid presented the facts in a way that leave room for speculation about Shanna having a role in Jared's death, citing their rocky divorce papers and her absence from the funeral. Even though we didn't always get along, he was still the father of my kids. So I asked Shanna the question. Did you have anything to do with Jared's murder? No, I did not have anything to do with his murder. Shanna says she has no idea if the murder was targeted or what Jared was involved in, saying they ran in different circles. Do you have any idea who might have done this? I do not have any idea. I, as I said, we've been divorced. We don't run in the same social circles. I, all I know is that I would never want anybody to go through this. She told me if she could speak to Jared again, she'd say one thing. Honestly, that I wish it weren't like this. I wish things could, could have been and could be different. And Shanna told me despite this happening in her neighborhood, despite many people around her discussing the case, she has no intention of leaving Jack's Beach or Jacksonville. Meanwhile, police continue their search for the killer and they ask the community for any help it can provide. What about Mario? Did he grow obsessed with the twins? Did the twins feel like his own? So much so that he would kill for them? Or was he easily manipulated and would do anything to stay with Shauna, assuming Shauna knew and was involved? The internet has been ablaze with this case, hoping every day an additional arrest is made. Remember the photo at the beginning of this video? The one celebrating the life of Jared Bridegan. Yeah, there's more where that came from. You see, Shelly's mother hired a professional photographer to take a bunch of photos of this event celebrating the life of Jared Bridegan. Shockingly, or not shockingly, depending on who you ask, Mario and Shauna were there. A month after the murder of Jared, they turned up to celebrate the life of Jared Bridegan. The following are a bunch of chilling photos, courtesy of the blog of Shanna's mother, Shelly. The blog, called So Shelly, is sort of a stream of consciousness writing wall for the Gardner matriarch. This is a month after the murder. In a March 21, 2022 post, Shelly says this, and I quote, It was so sweet to see Liam and Abby surrounded by family and friends as they recalled happy memories of their dad. Just before sunset, everyone cut flowers from beautiful arrangements, walked over the dune together, and tossed them into the ocean as a farewell. The guests received heart-shaped cookies made by Liam and Abby, with their mom's help, of course, to thank them for their support. The event was filled with good food, lots of visiting, and an enormous amount of love. Thank you for spending 23 minutes of your life listening to me narrate this story. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, it took me hours of my life, uh, but it was so worth it. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching. If you skim through it, that's fine. Um, the chapters are there to kind of get you through the story if you know parts of the story or, um, you know. So uh, yeah, uh, hope you liked it. If you liked it, please consider, you don't have to, consider leaving a like, subscribing if you want, and try to post these every week. And, uh, and yeah, comment on what you think uh, is going on with this case it's uh kind of wild and uh it just feels like something is on the horizon so we'll look forward to that thank you